Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through volvulus. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash volvulus or in the general surgery section of the ZeroDefinals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Volvulus is a condition where the bowel twists around itself and the mesentery that it's attached to. The mesentery is the membranous peritoneal tissue that creates a connection between the bowel and the posterior abdominal wall. The bowel gets its blood supply from the mesentery through the mesenteric arteries. Twisting in the bowel leads to a closed loop bowel obstruction where a section of the bowel is isolated by the obstruction on either side. The blood vessels that supply the bowel can be involved, cutting off the blood supply to the bowel which leads to bowel ischemia. Ischemia leads to death of the bowel tissue, which is called necrosis, and eventually bowel perforation. Let's talk about the types of volvulus. There are two main types of volvulus depending on the area affected, a sigmoid volvulus and a sequel volvulus. Sigmoid volvulus is more common and tends to affect older patients. The twist affects the sigmoid colon. A key cause is chronic constipation and lengthening of the mesentery attached to the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid colon becomes overloaded with feces, causing it to sink downwards and then causing it to twist. A sigmoid volvulus is also associated with a high fibre diet and the excessive use of laxatives. Sequel volvulus is less common and tends to affect younger patients, and the twist occurs in the cecum. So what are the risk factors for volvulus? Well, the risk factors are neuropsychiatric disorders, for example, Parkinson's disease, nursing home residents, chronic constipation, a high fibre diet, pregnancy, and intestinal adhesions. So what's the presentation? The signs and symptoms of a volvulus are akin to bowel obstruction, with vomiting, particularly green bilious vomiting, abdominal distension, diffuse abdominal pain, and absolute constipation and a lack of flatulence. So how is a volvulus diagnosed? Abdominal x-ray can show the coffee bean sign in sigmoid volvulus, where the dilation and twisted sigmoid colon looks like a giant coffee bean. A contrast CT scan is the investigation of choice to confirm the diagnosis and identify other pathology. A Tom tip for you, remember the coffee bean sign for your MCQ exams. It's worth looking up photographs so that you can recognise it and immediately know the diagnosis, which is a sigmoid volvulus, if it comes up. So how is it managed? The initial management is the same as with bowel obstruction, making the patient nil by mouth, inserting an NG tube and providing IV fluids. Conservative management with endoscopic decompression can be attempted in patients with a sigmoid volvulus who don't have peritonitis. Endoscopic decompression involves inserting a flexible sigmoidoscope carefully with the patient in the left lateral position and this results in correction of the volvulus. A flatus tube or a rectal tube is left in place temporarily to help decompress the bowel and then it's later removed. If conservative management is used there's a risk of recurrence around 60%. Surgical management of a volvulus involves a laparotomy, which is open abdominal surgery, a Hartman's procedure for a sigmoid volvulus, which is removal of the rectosigmoid colon and formation of a colostomy, and an ileocecal resection or right hemicolectomy for a sequel volvulus. Essentially, surgical management involves removing the section of bowel that's affected by the volvulus. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero Definals is not just a YouTube channel, 
There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations, and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards, and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine, and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.